70-year-old Job Makoto vows to turn the province around as he is sworn in as the new Premier of the Northwest. Finance Minister Nkwankwanene says there is no money to give to ESCOM to assist with salary increases. Very good evening to you. This is E! News at 8. Hello, I'm Gareth Edwards. Former Northwest Premier Supra Mahamopelo is challenging the assertion that governance in that province has collapsed. Mahamopelo spoke to E! News after the swearing-in of his successor, Job Makoro. The ANC chairperson in the province stepped down last month as the Premier after the province faced violent protests and was placed under administration. Aldrin Sampia is in the Northwest. Hi. Job Tebuho Mokoro. Swear. Swear. That I will be faithful to the Republic of South Africa. That I will be faithful to the Republic of South Africa. And will obey. And will obey. Respect. Respect. And uphold the Constitution. And uphold the Constitution. And all other law of the Republic. And all other law of the Republic. And behind me are scenes where the law was broken, but by citizens in this province who argued that there has been a collapse of governance, forcing the president to intervene. But what happens now to the report of the interministerial committee? Yes, I think it is important that we should know what is the, what are the contents of the of, of the report. Um, I think it is very very important. Earlier on, you asked me about uh, changing the executive, and I said, but. One has to do that on an informed basis. This will be part of the information that one will have to uh, uh, look at. But would Mohoro be able to wield such power, considering that Supra Maumapilu remains the chairperson of the ANC in the province? Maumapilu says that he will support Mohoro, but he has a different take on this assertion that there has been a collapse of governance. Yes, there were challenges, but there was no collapse of government. Uh, that I can say even in court about collapse of government because a collapse of government, you measure it against the expectations that are enshrined in the Constitution. And if you think the 70-year-old is not up for the job, take a listen. I am very proud to be 70 and I tell you, <laughs> very fit. Well, disgruntled ANC members have served court papers on the party's leadership in Limpopo. They're trying to stop this weekend's Limpopo elective conference. They claim that some processes leading up to this conference have been unlawful. Uh, my colleague Sam Kelo Maseko is in Limpopo. He joins us uh, live now. Sam Kelo, good evening to you. What problems with the processes do these ANC members have? Well, Gareth, they're raising issues such as the legitimacy of the ANC's Provincial Executive Committee here in the, in the Limpopo province. They are saying that their term of office as a PEC expired in February. That has been confirmed by the Provincial Secretary Nobs Siabe, along with, along with the Provincial Chairperson Stan Matabata. So that's the main bone of contention by these three disgruntled members of the Peter Mukaba region. They're also saying that this PEC did not have the necessary powers and the mandate to uh, turn... Uh, the leadership structure of uh, the Peter Mukaba region from an REC to that of an RTT. They also allege that uh, the voting uh, pack, which was uh, the nominations by the delegates, was tampered with in the ANC's RGC of Peter Mukaba, which is the biggest region here in Limpopo. So that's the main contention that they have, and that's why they have decided to approach the South Gauteng High Court in Johannesburg with Lutuli House, the office of the Secretary General being the first respondent that will be heard tomorrow at 11 o'clock at the South Gauteng High Court. The matter will be heard by Judge Makubel. Uh, so as it stands right now, Samkele, before 11 o'clock tomorrow, I can see the stage set up behind you. I imagine not much happening this evening. Mm. Well, Gareth, uh, all I'm, I'm going to say is that delegates will be making their way here to the conference venue. As you can see, the stage here behind me has been set with the face of the president of the African National Congress and of the country, President Cyril Ramaphosa. I was also expected to close the conference should that interdict not be granted uh, tomorrow at the South Gauteng High Court. He'll be closing this conference on Sunday afternoon uh, once the results are also out and once the, 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 the new chairperson and the new PEC has been elected. 
elected. So it, it's only it's a waiting game now until that court uh, uh, hearing st uh, starts tomorrow morning at 11 o'clock at the South Height Houding High Court in Johannesburg. All right, we'll wait to see what happens on that. Samkela Maseko working the story for us, uh, reporting live from Polokwane here on E! News. Now, the president himself, Sir Ramaphosa, delivered the keynote address at the National Union of Mine Workers Congress. The union is voting to elect its new leadership. Uh, fights about credentials, though, delayed the first day of the gathering. Ramaphosa says union leaders should always put their members first. The vision and mission of this union is not, is not to promote certain individuals and serve their interests. The vision and mission of this union has never, never revolved around serving the interests of individuals. It has always been servicing the interests of the members of the National Union of Mine Workers. And it is for that reason that we have always said, from 1982, mine workers come first, the leaders come last. The finance minister says there is no money to give to ESCOM to help them increase salaries. This as talks between the power utility and trade unions are set to continue this coming Monday. That after workers rejected the power utility's wage offer of 4.7%, they tabled a counter-proposal of 9%. And Klanklanene is attending an investor roadshow as the country tries to raise foreign investment. Our UK correspondent Ollie Barrett spoke to him in this exclusive interview. Finance Minister Nklanklanene says he's positive South Africa will get the necessary foreign investment. He's trying to reassure international investors about the South African economy. Well, I'm still very optimistic. Um, the conversations that we have had with investors, um, though mainly portfolio investors um, that we're talking to, but um, um, they actually are quite positive because it's important for us that they appreciate our openness in discussing uh, policy developments uh, back in South Africa because it's important for them to keep their finger on the pulse. Nene says despite some economic challenges and a volatile rand, there are some positives. From our side, the, um, one of the things we normally do in, 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 case, in, in uh, times like this is to see how best we could also take advantage of um, a, a, weak, um, a weak rand. Uh, for instance, um, um, beefing up our um, exports, as you, as you would know. It's for that reason that we're talking to some of those investors who are in the ex um, export business. It's unclear as to how ESCOM will fund wage increases. Nene says there is no money to give the power utility a helping hand. Well, the money doesn't exist, um, but what exists is, um, is goodwill and, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, political will also to um, have a, a, an honest and open, frank discussion on um, how best we could uh, t take this forward in the interest of South Africa. He says despite South Africa being vulnerable right now, there are structural forms in place to deal with a global financial crisis should there be one. National Treasury says the public sector wage agreement exceeds the money it has available. Treasury is confirming they are trying to contain costs by issuing severance and early retirement packages. The deal exceeds Treasury's budget by 30 billion rand. Treasury is warning that this may affect service delivery, but says government will try and manage the situation. And coming up after the break, here on E! News. Residents in Guguletu vent their frustrations at the Human Settlements Minister over the shortage of housing in the Cape Flats shacks. Welcome back. Help us or we will not vote. That's the threat by fed up Guguletu residents in Cape Town. National Human Settlements Minister Noma Ndia Mfaketo met with some of the 15,000 people living in backyards in and around the Cape Flats Township. The group grew very impatient with promises made, saying they've heard them time and time again. Pilati Satusa was there. 
next thing, you figure ends. I'm a Kaya Banduana bed. I've got pictures of Okiam, Likaya, Belushu, Fort Banduana Bam, Nam Saja, Nalbalitata. If any of you, if Sunga cool, Mamma, was him now, if any express layer, Sunga cool. I'm very angry. Go government, where to? Residents, tired of all the promises, are looking for concrete plans on where they can live. Protesters in the crowd were evicted from land they were occupying just this week. They were reassured that work on a nearby piece of land will begin in August. <laughs> Umhlaba lo sitting with 4884. Umhlaba ozaku accommodator mostly if family only as 550. She says there are 21 other parcels in Guguletu that can be bought from private owners for housing in the long term. But recently evicted shack dwellers are having none of it, pulling out their trump card. 2019 is around the corner. Si vote lu national mos. Ba bekwa city. Ba send this tablet as abo. This time as is so. So the space is tablet. The minister says a coordinated steering committee will have to be formed to begin ticking off some of the things on that list. Pila Disitusa, Cape Town. Well, the struggling 14 municipalities in the Eastern Cape are on the verge of being taken over. They claim they cannot pay salaries because they're not collecting enough revenue. Reporter Sandy McCowan visited one of the municipalities, the Great Kai. Nokuzola Mbongisa is in mourning. Her 28-year-old brother died a week ago. She is the breadwinner in her family of 11 and her employer, the Great Kai Municipality, has not paid her for the past two months because it's bankrupt. The municipality's excuse is that it was unable to collect enough revenue to pay workers, yet the mayor and all the councillors were paid. We were very angry in May because on the 15th of May they paid themselves, all councillors. Even though when it comes to employees, the, the excuse was that the financial system was not working which was not the case, was councillors were paid. The Cooperative Governance MEC stepped in after Finance Minister Nklankla Nene instructed the province to take over the running of 14 distressed Eastern Cape municipalities. The administrator has implemented a financial recovery plan as the Great Kai municipality owes 4 million rand in salaries and has not been able to pay its creditors. We have engaged the National Treasury uh, national cocktail through the provincial cocktail and, and provincial treasury. We have had a series of meetings. Um, I'm waiting for a response. Basically, we ask for them to advance us from our equitable share for the coming financial year. Meanwhile, residents are angry at the lack of service delivery. There's no service because they spend money where they shouldn't be spending it. A mayor's car is a million rand. They should never will better. He's also asked residents to come forward with any evidence of wrongdoing. Sandy McCowan, Komcha. Here's a reminder of your main stories this evening. 70-year-old Job Makoro vows to turn the Northwest Province around as he is sworn in as the new Premier. Finance Minister Nklankla Nene says there is no money to give to ESCOM to assist with salary increases. After the break, your weather details, and then Nelson Mandela's legacy is celebrated in a new fashion collection.
Good evening everyone and welcome back to the Weather Centre. We're expecting it to be a clear start to Saturday for much of the country, although there will be some early fog along the eastern escarpment as well as the Atlantic seaboard, and that's taking place ahead of the approaching cold front. That system will bring cloud towards Cape Town as well as rain over the area for much of the day, while it's going to be mostly sunny in the afternoon for just about all of the rest of the country. Let's take a look at your detailed forecast and in the Northern Cape it's going to be a clear but windy afternoon for many places including Uppington and Daad while in the west some cloud cover moves in and that keeps Springbok chilly with a maximum of only 16 degrees. Rain likely for some areas in the Western Cape extending from Langebaan all the way through to Bredasdorp. Inland for Worcester as well but elsewhere over the province is going to be dry, George reaching a maximum of 21 degrees. Daytime temperatures are going to be higher all across the Eastern Cape and especially warm closer to the coastline. And it's going to be another clear and warm day over most of KwaZulu-Natal with many areas getting into the mid-20s. Slightly cooler conditions in the forecast for parts of Mpumalanga where we could have those morning fog patches. It's going to be a cold start to the day for Standerton with a minimum of only one. Cooler air also spreads into Limpopo, keeping Polokwane in the lower 20s for the afternoon, and the cloud cover gradually thins out as the day goes on. Clear and dry weather once again in the northwest. It's going to be coolest in Fentersdorp with a high of only 23. And in the Free State, it's going to be a crisp winter day. Very chilly at first, but temperatures rising to about 20 degrees in the afternoon for many places. And finally for Gauteng, another cool day over the province. Cold at first for Johannesburg and Soweto with an overnight low of 5, but then climbing to 21. Let's look ahead to your forecast conditions for Sat Sunday. And we are expecting it to be dry over South Africa, clear for the interior, but partly cloudy along the country's coastline. And very similar for the start of the work week. It's going to be a cloudy day though for George with a maximum of 17 degrees. That's all from me. Have a wonderful weekend. And let's end off with this. To commemorate the Nelson Mandela centenary, the Nelson Mandela Foundation, together with Kasua Africa, has relaunched the 46664 clothing brand. It honors a young Mandela dating back to his Onkonto West Seaswear days. My colleague Ditiro Salepe attended the event. Kisiwa Africa Clothing and the Nelson Mandela Foundation has relaunched the 46664 clothing brand. The reason we're relaunching 46664 in Youth Month is we want to take this month to get young people to think about the young Mandela. The young Mandela who was a rebel. The young Mandela who was a rebel for a, a cause. He was a revolutionary. He was defiant. But he was defiant for a reason, because his principles were being violated. And that's the Madiba we want to celebrate in Youth Month. The brand also wants to tell the story of the female freedom fighters. A 4664 shirt of a woman, a woman with a head wrap, and she signifies the women of the revolution who gave their lives. The clothes are available online on kosiwa.com and will soon be available in retail stores. Ditros Lepe, Johannesburg. And one final reminder of our headline stories. 70-year-old Job Mokoro vows to turn the province around as he is sworn in as the new Northwest Premier. Finance Minister Ed Klanklanene says there is no money to give to ESCOM to assist with salary increases. From me and the team, have a great evening. Bye-bye.